to six o'clock. And as we've advertised, we've got another event for you, an in conversation event uh, between myself, who I'm, I'm a facilitator, and Gail Ferriman, who should be on your screen now, and Eleanor Sims, who I hope is on your screen now. Hello, both. Hello. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Um, <clears throat> the format, um, everyone, for this that uh, we've arranged beforehand is that uh, both Gail and Eleanor will give just a little sort of short introduction, four or five minutes each, of their work and why. <laughs> and then we'll crash on into what hopefully will be um, a, a, a joint chat rather than a sort of a, a boring lecture from any of us. We'll, we'll hopefully be interactive talking about matters of concern. We might even touch on things that are, are not much concern at all, but hopefully this will all be very interesting to all our, um, uh, our um, listeners. Um, so, uh, Gail uh, is a jeweller in Derbyshire, yep. England, for those people who might be abroad at this moment. Uh, and uh, Eleanor, uh, presumably, are you speaking to us from Edinburgh? Eleanor? I am, yes, I'm in Edinburgh. The yes. last time I saw you, you're in Glasgow. That's right. I do get to travel sometimes <laughs> when we don't have restrictions. Yeah, absolutely. And um, having having tossed uh, tossed a coin a bit earlier, um, uh, we it fell to Eleanor to start uh, giving a, 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 her brief in, introduction first. So can we possibly have Eleanor full screen, please? Okay, okay. I'm just Can everybody see my my slides? Yep. Yes, it looks yep. beautiful. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Right. I've been playing with Zoom, so I've also got a background of one of my slides <laughs> as well. Well, um, I was really uh, thrilled to be asked to to talk for a wee bit about my my work and to be involved in a conversation with Gail and Terry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about me. And then I'm going to talk a, a bit more about the fa about fa making with found materials. So the areas I'm going to, to, to touch on are scavenging and sense of place, colour, shape and texture, other people's rubbish, histories and hybrids. Okay. So um, scavenging and sense of place. Scavenging is something that I have always done, even since I was a really small child. I am somebody who always has my eyes down. I remember spending every family holiday in North Norfolk, wandering up and down the beach with my eyes down, hoping that I was going to find some amber, and I never did. And these days as an adult, I'm much more interesting in interested in scavenging for um, plastics. So, um, oops, place has a really, a really significant role for me. This is, um, this is five minutes walk from where I live. It's just outside Edinburgh. It's a former industrial area that's been reclaimed using ash from what was um, a coal-fired power station just along the coast in East Lothian. And um, there were lots and lots of different kinds of industries here over, over the years, over the centuries, mining, pottery, glass, ceramics, um, all kinds. Um, so I'm, I'm very interested in this place. It's right beside where I live. It's got a kind of um, scarred beauty. It's very bleak, but I find it very beautiful. And um, yes, it's very, very, it's just very interesting. It's a very interesting place. Nature's reclaiming it now that the power station's gone. Um, and the beaches are full of the most amazing rubbish. Um, and all kinds of interesting things that you can find to make work from. So colour, texture and shape. 
over over lockdown or just before, I think it was just before lockdown started I got involved in a creative project called 100 Days Scotland Project which some of you might have heard about but essentially it's a creative project I think originally started in New Zealand um, and it's run a couple of years in, in Scotland and um, the idea is that each day you post something on Instagram which you've made or found or created or which is relevant to your creative practice. So I, my project was 100 days of uh, found words. So what I did was uh, when I went out walking, I found things usually on the beach near to where, uh, where I just showed you the photo. And um, I gave them a, a word in response. So the one that you're looking at just now is, is perforations. I think it used to be a hairbrush. So perforations is now a, a necklace. So combined with some glass beads, some eco silver, and some reclaimed vintage knitting needles, it's become a multi-strand necklace. This is another example of where I've responded to color and, and, um, and form. Um, the circle of this brooch uh, was formerly a Bakelite napkin ring, and it's been sliced down. There are um, a couple of beach finds and a piece of reclaimed um, resin from one of my studio colleagues. So I use other people's stuff all the time as well as stuff that I find. So as you can see, I'm very interested in the kind of ideas related to assemblage and uh, drawing through placing objects. Other people's rubbish. So this is an example of a necklace which, um, which I made about a year ago, and it's using a beach find plastic. Um, it's also uh, using um, a, a half um, freshwater pearl, which was uh, donated to me by someone else in my studio building, and a piece of reclaimed e-waste. I'm quite interested in e-waste, and I'm interested in it particularly when it's been it's been processed again and something's happened to it. This one's been, been um, just uh, processed by being left in the street and run over by various cars and whatever, rain and whatever's happened to it in the elements. And then I've done a little bit of additional work with it by um, slightly sanding it back and oxidizing it. But I'm very interested in using other people's waste. And last year I was really lucky to get a, um, a great little parcel from Dr. Sandra Wilson at Duncan of Jordanston College of Art in Dundee. Um, and she's been involved in a project called Urban Gold Rush, where she's been taking e-waste and then working with a chemistry lab in Edinburgh University to extract all the precious metals through a process of agitation and chemistry. Um, what's left is really very beautiful. So it's e-waste, which has had everything that's valuable extracted, but it's still really beautiful. So I'm still working my way through using a lot of Sandra Wilson's rubbish. <clears throat> okay, history. Um, I'm really interested in history. This is the, when I was 17, I went to university to study, um, to study history and uh, I, um, I'm just very interested in the, the ideas of, of uh, the kind of layers of existence and patterns of settlement that have been in, in certain areas. My family live um, in a cottage on a farm in the borders. And um, these are pieces that were that are related to that, particularly the tag, which has come from a cow's log and um, a number 11, which I really like because that's my house number. But I just found it on the track in the farm where my mum and dad live. Um, you'll also see from this that I'm, I've stopped using um, precious and semi-precious stones unless they're reclaimed. So um, I'm now using um, CZs and I'm loving the orange CZs. The circle on the back of this is a piece, um, a piece of plastic which was um, a gasket and that came from a, a, scrap, a scrap store. This is another piece which has got a lot to do with histories. Um, this is a piece of Bakelite which comes off the beach beside the uh, area where, the, where I, I showed you the photograph. Um, and the, 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 the piece with the, the perforations in it is actually a paint fragment from the seat outside the studios where I used to work. 
So it's it feels very personal. It's where I used to work and it's where I go and, and walk and, and beach come. Sorry, I keep pressing the wrong buttons. Right. This is also quite significant in terms of histories. The, the blue pieces um, were a fly-tipped moulded plastic chair, which was stamped on the bottom as made in Scotland, 1963, uh, which I thought was great. And it had just been abandoned, um, again, just near the beach area where, where I walk. Um, and um, I've used brass and I've also used vintage knitting needles um, to make a, a, a necklace with this. This is the, these are the pieces which are in the Glass Houses exhibition. Um, I've chosen this to just to talk about hybrids. Um, these are, this is called current necklaces. They're two AC and DC, so they're two currents. And what I've done is I've used um, kind of resin pieces that were attached to boards that were obviously used in some kind of science lab in a school. Um, and the, thought the resin was absolutely beautiful because it kind of, it traps the pieces inside like amber. So what I've done is I've mimicked the pieces in each, um, each, in each element. So I've, I've made something that looks like a fuse and I've made something using um, telecom wire and punching letters in. So I've used reclaimed materials to mimic reclaimed pieces which I've found and I really enjoy that kind of challenge um, playing with materials to to um, to kind of emulate something that I've already found so um, these pieces which are in glass houses are an example of hybrids and reclaimed so I think that's me really and I'm happy to answer any questions later <laughs> Terry, you're on mute. Sorry, I am, I am now unmuted. Thank you very much, <laughs> Eleanor. That's great. Um, a very interesting um, uh, view of your work and surprising that there is so much uh, stuff uh, on waste ground around Scotland, but that's a silly statement because this is wonderful, isn't it? You can, mm. we, we can find so much waste wherever well, that's we are. The thing. So part of me is really excited about beaches being cleaner and part of me <laughs> is is a little just it's awful <laughs> isn't it because I've, I've been making sustainable um work and I've been using reclaimed materials and reclaimed plastics since I was a student I, I graduated yeah, yeah. from Edinburgh College of Art in, as a mature student in 2012 and I've been making since I was a student I've been making using reclaimed materials yep. there are fewer uh, materials on the beaches which is good yeah <laughs> but it makes it more of a challenge <laughs> yeah, but I know, you know, wherever you go, you'll, you'll, we will find rubbish. We will find absolutely, um, waste absolutely. material. And, and if you yeah. have your eyes down, as I always do, it's absolutely. amazing what being, you can being find. Being creative. Being creative, we can do things with it. Okay, super. I'm sure there will be questions, Eleanor, later. Thank you. Uh, but can we now go to Gail uh, and uh, have a few minutes from Gail as to her background and the work that she does? Over to you, go. Hi, everybody. <laughs> well, I, I found that fabulous to, to listen to, Eleanor. It was lovely to hear more about uh, what informs your work. And um, I just think your work's very poetic. It's uh, really beautiful. And although I know it's plastic, the way you've worked with it, it just, it doesn't look, you don't immediately think, oh, plastic, you know, you just look at it and just see a beautiful piece. Thank you. So, no, it's, it's lovely to, as I say, more, uh, even more, it's even richer now. I know more about kind of the, the landscape, uh, which, yeah, was very, very interesting. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> okay, well, I feel like, Eleanor, um, I uh, appreciate this opportunity to uh, also give um, a little bit more insight into the ideas that inform my work um, and how I got started um, using current affairs in my work. So if I could have the first, the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so these uh, brooches um, are nothing to do with climate change um, or climate emergency as it is now, uh, but they were the start of me using current affairs in my work. When I was studying for my MA at uh, the School of Jewellery, we were given a project to make work for the clothes show live. 
um, the fashion show. And so I made these lighthearted responses to um, the, the Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky affair um, and had fun doing it. And I got quite a good reaction to them. So when I finished my MA, um, alongside my main practice, um, I continued to use current affairs uh, in some pieces. Uh, so could I have the next slide, please? So these I made um, fairly soon afterwards. Uh, they are glass and silver, and um, I call them my ice core brooches because I was reading um, in the newspapers uh, about the research going on in the Arctic um, with these ice cores that re researched and recorded the structure of the ice and the changes of the ice. Uh, and I just thought they were very beautiful, uh, sort of watery landscapes and visually interesting. And the inclusions in them, I thought looked uh, like gemstones. So I used them visually to um, make, the, make, make these pieces. So next slide, please. So then in uh, 2008, um, I was involved with uh, an exhibition called We Are Here which was an ACJ exhibition. Um, and for that, I made these wind turbine brooches. I absolutely love wind turbines. I think they've uh, transformed the landscape in a very beautiful, elegant way. I know they're controversial and I quite like the fact that I made these brooches that could be a little talking point for those to discuss, who are interested to discuss whether they like or don't like turbines. Um, I also quite like the fact that you could wear one on its own or you could wear a multiple together. And if you wear a multiple together, you're wearing your own personal wind farm, which I find quite funny. So next slide, please. So at the same uh, time I made the wind turbine um, wind farm brooches, I made these uh, three disc brooches. Uh, they're made of silver and resin and copper and resin. So the silver and resin one um, was to do with the Arctic ice melting. The one on the left is uh, to do with the coal and gas industries. Um, and at the time it was text about the campaign for um, keeping, um, keeping it in the ground. It's called keep it in the ground, but it was about keeping the, the, the coal underground, not, not uh, mining it. And the one on the right uh, is a very, obvious um, symbol of a, a weather barometer, which was to reference global warming. Um, I just want to say about the silver and resin piece that when I made it, uh, the resin was clear and you could see the quote that was printed on the silver disc. Um, but over time, the resin and the silver have reacted and the the resin has gone this lovely sort of sun gold, which I, I think is quite appropriate for um, this uh, the theme of uh, the Arctic ice melting. So next slide, please. So that brings me up to um, the work for the Glass Houses exhibition that um, I wanted to use the three brooches to as start points for my work. Um, so this is my white necklace. And it's a um, plastic packing strip that I got from a local shop from their trade waste bin. And I did ask if I could take it. Um, and I uh, stripped it and braided it to reference um, plastic being uh, found uh, to be found trapped in the, the Arctic ice now. So next slide, please. So my black necklace um, is uh, Whitby Jet, which I found um, some of it, but not all of it, sadly. And like Eleanor, I love doing the beach combing bit, but no, I'm not looking for plastic, so I'm looking for jet. <laughs> um, and the uh, rubber was to reference the petrochemical industries that we rely on. Um, so that was, that was that one. So next slide, please. So finally, my red necklace uh, for the exhibition. This piece um, I made at the 
start of the lockdown in March, um, when everything went a bit weird. And so I sat in my workshop and I was uh, just thinking about, reflecting about things. And I was thinking about the images that I had seen uh, on the television and on the newspapers about the um, horrific bushfires in Australia, um, the devastation of the landscape and the, the animals there. So I knew I wanted to do a necklace that was subtly, I mean, I, I'm not into making badges that sort of blare things, but subtly for me was about the fire and so it was a danger sign and so on. So I um, wanted to do a red necklace for that. Uh, I wanted also to use just materials that were in my workshop. I didn't want to source any from outside. I think because we'd just gone into this lockdown, I felt quite sort of shut down really with it. Um, so. I looked around and I had some wooden doweling pieces um, that I worked and then I burnt and charred them and then painted them and sealed them before putting on the uh, copper, the, sorry, the uh, gold leaf that uh, was for do the flickering flames. So just finally, I just wanted to say um, about my materials because um, I haven't been working with recycled materials um, up until really now. Um, and so when I was making my earlier work, the materials I chose, there weren't any particular material for the, to, for the thing. It was what worked to make the visual image. But for this exhibition, I thought the materials I chose were absolutely key to convey the message that I wanted to get across. And I think that's something that I definitely want to take forward and think much more about the materials and kind of what they say um, for the, the piece that I make and just have that kind of sensibility in my work. So thank you. Um, and yes, I also welcome many questions. <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Gail. That, that's really super. You're welcome. And if we can have um, yeah, the three of us on the screen. I hope you can all see that. Um, we'll we'll kick off with, as I say, something which I hope is interactive. Now, uh, generally, um, we, as I've said in my report, and we all appreciate this, we've all suffered, and I think suffered is a good word, uh, with the pandemic. And so I just thought, quite maybe quite briefly, uh, that you might, each of you, like to say how you've been affected by it. And when I say, if I did mention the word suffered and there could be some bad bits. Gail, you've just mentioned that you actually found those wooden dowels, you know, so that was a very specific, shall we say a positive about that. Um, but it would be interesting just to have maybe a view on aspects of how you've experienced the pandemic and what difference it made to your generation of work, maybe the selling of your work whatever. Go, would you like to start just maybe yes, reiterating sure. what you've just said about materials? <laughs> um, yeah, well, um, certainly, well, my, uh, my workshop is um, attached to my house, so I didn't have any problem getting there. Um, but uh, the selling side of it is different because I wasn't really um, trying to sell during this time. I wasn't uh, I was involved in any trade fairs uh, and I wasn't to uh, putting my work in galleries. So that wasn't really a, a, a kind of an issue for me. And I'm sure maybe Eleanor would be better to talk about that side of it. But if you want to kind of know more about, as you say, the, the, how the other things that affected me were um, as we went into the lockdown one, um, I actually thought it was, it was quite helpful in a way because I had a lot more time to think about my work because all my other commitments kind of came to a halt. Um, and so I actually had time to quietly reflect and, and, and spend time thinking and doing a lot more reading um, about this theme that we're talking about, climate emergency. Um, so I actually quite not enjoyed, that's the wrong word, but I found um, that it actually, you were right, I had some quite good positives of that first lockdown. Sure, sure. Um, the yeah. second lockdown, <laughs> um, or unless you want to come back to that, because I can come back to it with it if Eleanor wants to chip in about the selling, because I don't want, I think she'd be better to talk about that. Yeah, sure, let, let, let's hear from Eleanor. 
Well, I think, I think well, I'm sure you, um, everybody who's watching this knows that all of a sudden everything that you thought you had planned and everything you were looking forward to doing just disappeared. And galleries that I've worked with have closed and opportunities that I, I thought I had had gone. And, and yeah, so it was, it was very difficult. It was very difficult, right? As it has been for, for, for a lot of people. Um, I'm, um, I was working at home. The studios that I work in are in Edinburgh. My studios were closed initially during lockdown. And um, so I share a studio and uh, I work in a, play, a building which is a fantastic resource where there are about well, nearly 80 of us different um wow. different artists and designers work so inevitably i really miss that i really really miss that i really miss yeah. the the stimulation yeah. and um just the exchange that, that you that you have with others yeah. and um I, my husband's a painter so he and he has a studio at home so i'm actually really fortunate because i was able to move some of my kit from my studio into um, his studio and he very kindly tolerated me being in there um, but I didn't find it very easy. On the other side of it I found um, that there were some really creative responses so I got involved in Unity in Isolation um, which was um, an initiative that um, was about you know making jewellery in response to the circumstances that we were in which was really good. I really enjoyed that because I, I made something and I used stitch textiles, which I've not used since I was a student. So that was really good. And I also got involved in this 100 Days Project Scotland, which was great because it, fed, it, it, it kind of fed into my work. I have a great box of, um, I'm actually going to show you. I have a box of things. This is part of my 100 Days Project. <laughs> and um, uh, quite a few pieces have already become work. They've already become pieces of work. Yeah. So that was great because that has a kind of a sense of being part of something and um, it, it, it enabled me to uh, give myself a bit of structure and, um, and think about what I, was, what I was going to do and what I was going to use. So that was really, really good. Also uh, the like artist support sorry. pledge was really sorry, Gail. good opportunity sorry, Gail was... well. People were fantastic. So I didn't mean to cut in there, but it just sounds like you felt connected again with other people, which is is, is obviously you know very beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm... Really, really important. Yeah. Just to see, yeah, what other people were doing, and to yeah. Well, if I you're normally in a situation where you've got eighty, so, um, crikey, I'm sorry, not I was saying yes. The artist pledge. <laughs> sorry, girl. The, 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 yeah, the, the artist support pledge was very important because um, it was an opportunity for, for those of us who are makers to get our work out and to share it and to understand work and to support each other. So that was fantastic. So there have been some really positive things. Okay, I just, yeah, um, I, I agree with you to be some positive things. As I say, for me, the first lockdown went okay. <laughs> Um, because I kind of actually enjoyed having that time to take a breath and I do work quite on my own anyway so I'm not quite I didn't feel quite so the change that you had experienced um, and in terms of isolation I love the ACJ um, challenges just seeing them you know on Instagram and things like that I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, just having it there I didn't have to get involved with it but just seeing it was was quite nice um, but for me, I've had almost the opposite experience, kind of like you, were, you, you kind of needed that connectedness. Um, and I agree with, with, with work, other people who are working in the same thing. But I found with the second lockdown, which I know is sort of shorter, but uh, I've had family members uh, kind of come back home. They've been working at home. I've completely lost my routine, um, which sounds like you lost in the first one. Um, and I have really struggled. <laughs> to get making in the second one because I just get started and then something happens and I'm needed or whatever. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't get going. So I have found it quite a, a, a challenge this time. I'm sure things will settle down. 
I can't hear you, Terry. Sorry, okay. Um, on that particular note, uh, can we move on um, from that experience? And something that occurs to me that we really ought to be talking about uh, are the factors that are driving the Glasshouse um, exhibition. Uh, the issues that have come to the fore uh, this year, central to Glasshouses, climate change, population increase, diminishing resources. Um, in different ways, your work and obviously others uh, reflect our concern. Um, I don't know, in, in, in a couple of sentences, what are your thoughts about that? I mean, how worried should we be um, as designers, as craftspeople, as contributors, maybe, to some of the problems? <laughs> Is that likely to be an issue? Um, mm -hmm. any, any thoughts? Who wants to sort of kick off on something like that? You got anything yeah, I'll, I'll go with it. Um, I'll go obviously, you see my work, my presentation of my work. Um, I'm very engaged with that question um, and it's a big issue it's a big question um, and I think you know there are some positives because when I think back 12 years ago when I made the wind turbine brooches yes people thought they were nice and everything but they weren't really talking about the subject so much look at the difference now that 12 years on everybody's sort of talking about it so there's that um, and I think there have been some big big developments quite quite you know in the last like you know year or so, people have really changed their thinking. Um, and I think it, it's going to go forward from that. The reading I've been doing is kind of does scare you a bit and you have to kind of try and keep it in context. Um, the fact that we've got only a decade, you know, we've got just this 10 years to get things back on an even keel is quite um, daunting. Um, and we're, we are all involved in that. Um, so yeah, I think there are some big changes that everyone has to make, and, and or question for yourself, definitely. Yeah, sure. Uh, as a design uh, maker, and you know, as yeah, everything. Can we, can we can we move on to other aspects of that question after we've heard from Eleanor? Yeah. Uh, Eleanor, do you have any initial thoughts on the issues? Uh, well, uh, how worried should we be? <laughs> we should be terrified. Um, what can I say? I mean, a lot of the time, um, I think that we live in our little bubbles and, uh, well, like me, you know, think that we're uh, making, making, you know, making a stand by, you know, challenging issues about, you know, challenging concepts of what's precious and getting people to think about reclaiming things and reusing things. But um, I, you know, I don't give myself what I do doesn't make a huge amount of difference. It just makes me feel better that I'm not squandering resources as much. Um, yeah, but, so, but, yeah, but, but I, you know, uh, sorry. If I, I, think it's, I think it's enormous. I think it's terror. Yeah. I mean, yes, it makes you feel better. Fine. But surely, surely you are making a contribution. And if we think about our industry as a whole, I mean, it's, it's pretty sort of awful. They're really the high end, the, the whole couture, um, end of the, the jewellery industry. Um, I mean, what the hell are they doing about it? And, uh, you know, should we worry about that? Can we influence? I mean, will people well, stop, stop making uh, high value, uh, expensive jewellery? Um, is it just the, the, the designer makers like ourselves who are struggling against all of, all of these issues in what we do? I think it's very, I think it's very heartening. I know certainly in Scotland that each of the um, art colleges and further education colleges, which teach higher education courses in jewellery, have, um, have subscribed to um, an ethical and sustainable um, policy for, for making. So I think students coming out of art college now, um, okay. jewellers, um, you know, just starting off, that, that this is, you know, this is their normal. It's like, you know, is 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 about ethical practice and sustainable practice. Sure. How much that influences um, the the, the high end, I, I I don't know. No. I think it's going to take maybe even a generation to work through. But I think it is. Um, when I first started making work at like this, and in, in kind of like you know maybe ten plus years ago. Um, I was kind of odd. Now there are quite a lot of people making work out of recycled 
and reclaimed, well, reclaimed materials rather than recycled. So I think it's becoming more mainstream, which is a good thing. As a result of for students. I wanted to respond to so many things there, but um, yeah. just very quickly on Eleanor, you said um, you kind of thought maybe the changes you're making or what you're doing doesn't, do you think it makes an impact in, in the bigger scheme? I think it does. I think everybody's small changes definitely make a big difference. And us thinking as designer makers about what we're using in our workshops, how we're using it, what we're demanding of the um, metal companies that we're buying from, everything like that really matters. And I also think on the on the bigger scale, um, you know, if you're looking, I just had some time to think about this because you gave me the questions. Um, I think I take encouragement that what you're saying about the students is the same as the um, the jewellery buying uh, population um, will absolutely demand um, provenance mm -hmm. for, their, for what they're buying. They will want to know uh, whether it's ethical or not. Uh, they will be looking at that. So the high end, the couture people, all of the all of the gold and the diamond sort of industry will be having to be pulled to task on that. Um, and I also think that that's, that's one side, mm -hmm. the buying side, I think it's gonna be a big thing. And the, and the other that will make the industry, you know, uh, go forward in a better way. But the other thing is, um, I think that I've been reading about the uh, probability of a, or possibility of a nature tax coming in for the big companies, if you like. So big companies that are doing the mining and things like that, they have to pay back or give back to the communities and to the ecosystem uh, that they are, you know, affecting. And I think that will also have a huge impact where our industry can, you know, be positive. Um, so that's, they're going to have to do that. And in our small way, if we keep doing that and demanding, you know, um, the, the materials to be, fair trade, then I think that will make a, uh, you know, a, a, a positive. And just on that, sorry, and we've got Joe Biden. <laughs> we have, that should, that should make an improvement. Yeah, excellent, a good, a good point. I, mean, I, think, I, I think, yes, I mean, if we're all doing this, and I think the ACJs should be in a position, uh, as we are doing, to influence um, people's, uh, the public's education, uh, as Eleanor said, students' education, uh, promotion of students' education and their thoughts uh, by uh, our promotion, our exhibitions, um, we've, we, we must be having some effect. And uh, I think uh, uh, every, every sort of little bit is going to help in this. It's not going to happen overnight, but eventually I think we'll be, we'll be seeing uh, uh, obvious improvements. I think it's um, a change in people talking about it, as I said, and just, as you say, are, the ones uh, that have personal contact and knowing where, how, where things have come from. Definitely, mm -hmm. I think that's going to go. I mean, as you probably know, um, one of our advisors, the Decker, is really good on the... Um, yes. Uh, on, on following, you know, where the gold comes from and everything. That's one of her, her main sort of things that she's, uh, uh, she gives us. Um, one thing also that occurs to me that um, you mentioned, Gail, the, the changes that you've noticed over the last, what, 12 years or something. I mean, I've noticed within the ACJ, there are so many of our members now, makers, who are using, as, as Eleanor, uh, recycled materials. Uh, so that has got to reflect, um, uh, reflect uh, the, um, uh, the thing we're talking about. Um, I think we're, we're probably getting to a point, by the way, um, it was um, uh, something that initially we thought this would only go up until half past six. And <laughs> we're actually quite, quite far over that now. Um, I'm, I'm noticing that we, we have had some, you know, sort of comments all the way through this. Um, I mean, there's a comment, for instance, uh, from... Um, uh, from Hendrika Bartz Meltzer, who of course uses recycling uh, in her materials. And uh, 
and she you know thanks you both for your presentation and said it's very interesting uh, and i'm sure there are a lot of others with with as i say acj members who are moving with this theme of recycling and um, uh, would i'm sure bear out <coughs> uh, what what i'm saying um okay thank you uh, it's not a question of, sort of bringing it to an end now but i think it would be appropriate to move on uh, and to ask each of you uh, uh, individually, um, what are your personal plans, ambitions for the future? Whether or not they're sort of beach combing or street combing or, uh, or whatever. Go. Oh, okay. I thought Ellen might go combing. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> As I said at the end of my, my little presentation, um, I want to look at working with uh, reusing, recycling um, and found materials, which I haven't really used before. Um, I mean, the Whitby Jet maybe, but not, not otherwise generally. So I'm quite excited by that. But also I think just sort of to say that I will be looking even more closely at my workshop and how I can make that better. Because um, I have got rid of, um, some like my glass kiln or things that take up high energy. I've gone quite low tech, I've become more self-reliant. Um, but also I think it's just, yeah, looking at, at how, how you can make it, um, yeah, as, 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 as sustainable, I don't, it's a difficult word, as sustainable as possible. So yeah, I'm gonna be thinking about my workshop and my materials very, very keenly. Thank you. Okay, fine, good, Elena. Um, I'm just going to keep on wandering around with my eyes down. I think uh, <laughs> I, 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 my ambition is to continue making and to continue exhibiting, and to try and claw back to where I hoped I would be this year. Okay, good, fair enough. Um, I need to ask all of our um, our listeners uh, if there are any questions that you'd like, particularly to. Uh, Gail or Eleanor. I haven't got any specific questions for either of you uh, coming up yet. Uh, a lot of things saying uh, thank you for the interesting talk. Enjoyed your presentations. Great succinct presentation, thanks. Thank you both, fascinating. Yes, both, fascinating. <laughs> Great to have some more insights into your processes, Eleanor and Gail. Okay, no particular questions. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to throw in as we as we're doing quite well. Um, I'm going to throw in an interesting one, which might be something that actually, if you like, puzzles me a little bit, and it might be for Eleanor to to answer this. Um, Okay, Eleanor, you're 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 you've wandering around, got your eyes eyes down. You pick up a you pick up a bit of rubbish, dare I say? Mm -hmm. But interestingly, as an artist, you're converting that piece of rubbish. You're giving it added value, mm -hmm. but it's still a bit of old plastic. Mm -hmm. but you've actually made it a much much more interesting, shall I say, valuable piece of plastic. But how valuable? How do you price something that you've made in this particular way? It's really difficult. It's really, <laughs> it's really, really difficult. Um, yeah. I think it, it, it has changed because I, I, I know, I, I, yeah, when I was kind of, I always talk to people a lot about, I know where every single piece I have has come from. So I, I talk to people a lot about where things have come from and how things are made and, you know, they, they have a little backstory. Um, I think increasingly people are uh, more prepared to pay a wee bit more because it's, it is as much work to work with, in fact, in some ways there's more work working with um, kind of reclaimed weathered bits of plastic than, than working with beautiful pristine sheet. You know, it's, it's, it's a very different process and there's quite a lot of work involved, but it's, um, it is really, really difficult. I think um, 
I think what I have to do is I have to be really, I have to just be quite pragmatic about what I think, how much time something's taken, the value of the materials that I have used, and what I think people will actually consider is a, is a fair price. So I think that sometimes I do, I do want to price. I have to be honest because it is, yeah. you know, although I, I, although I think it's treasure, it is rubbish. Most of it, you know, so yeah. not at all, <laughs> yes, but, 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 you know, yeah, well, we, the rest of the stuff that people make jewelry from gets dug up out of the ground, doesn't it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. What's the value of that? Yeah, I, th I think if I can talk to people about the piece, uh, you know, I, I, I can, I can, I think I'm, you know, I think I can communicate well about my work and, and why it's precious and why it's important and how I've made it, and why I've made it like that, that makes the difference. And it ha it is changing. I think things are changing. People sure, are more, sure. um, are more sure. receptive to that. And yeah. um, I suppose they kind of like, maybe like the idea of being able to say, oh, do you like my necklace? It's... Um, <laughs> it's made of something other skin or well, it's you know something and it's like, environmentally you know. friendly <laughs> yeah yeah good words good words yeah okay yes thanks for trying to answer that and yeah i think you've, you've <laughs> tried very, very, no you did you, you've thanks done for a, the question a, a, terry a, a useful job a useful job uh and i'm sorry to spring that on you <laughs> uh any other comment gail just in in, in finishing Oh, uh, no, I don't think I've got anything more at okay. the moment. I've, I've, I've gone blank. <laughs> Super. OK, thanks. Right. I'll draw this to a close. Uh, thanking you and all the participants uh, who've been putting stuff on the chat. Um, I need to say thank you very much to Anastasia Young um, for all the sort of tech bits that she's managed to do. And she's still doing that. She, she's keeping us all together on the screen. Um, and also, obviously, to uh, Haru and Tamas and the team uh, for all that's happened in the ACJ this year. I, uh, I really don't know uh, whether we'll be doing this again in a year's time or whether we'll back, be back to really sort of uh, expensive travel all over the country type of activities. Let's wait and see. Um, it has been... It has been good fun in a way, this, and I quite enjoyed it. And um, I'm sure Lynn Bartlett, our treasurer, has enjoyed it as well, because it doesn't cost anything at all. Oops, <laughs> sorry. Um, OK, on that note, <laughs> on that note, I'll leave you all. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Terry. Have a, Bye, have a good evening. Bye. 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 Thank you.